right, uh, you're welcome back. It's TVC Breakfast this Monday morning. Yeah. Now, at least one person has been killed after heavy rains caused rivers to burst their banks in southeast Nigeria, uh, forcing tens of thousands of people to flee their homes. 21 communities have suffered heavy flooding with those close to waterways hardest hit, while many thatched houses were destroyed after becoming saturated. President Muhammadu Buhari said on Twitter on Thursday that at least 100,000 people had been displaced by the flooding in Benue based on early estimates. The National Emergency Management Agency said it had deployed a rescue team uh, to the region. Well, joining us in the studio is an enviro strategist. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Paul Abolo, good morning and thanks uh, for joining us. Good morning, good morning and thanks for having me. Yeah, here we are again uh, with this uh, flooding incident in, in Benue. And it's not only in Benue, almost every part of the country has been mm -hmm. affected one way or another. Of part course, of the we, world. Uh, absolutely. Indeed. Yes. Every part of the world. Mm -hmm. yes. The U.S., India, yeah. mm -hmm. everywhere. everywhere. Pakistan, everywhere. Yes. Is this really a, a result of natural uh, elements or man-made? It's a combination of both. Um, number one, okay. it's uh, global warming, mm. climate change. Climate change. Mm. And um, of course, um, the secondary issue is man-made. But if you look back into it, um, global warming is to a large extent man-made. Mm -hmm. So you find that everything revolves around man and his environment, how man treats the environment. So that's what we're having, but we need to bring it back home mm -hmm. as it consigns us. Yes, that, indeed. Which was the original context, mm -hmm. um, Benway State. Um, we have 110,000 people displaced. Mm -hmm. We have about 3,000 homes submerged. And I am surprised that we are not looking at this as a national emergency. And I can tell you why we have to look at a national emergency. Mm. Number one, uh, Benue State is the food basket of Nigeria. So what this implies is that um, there is an attack mm. on our food basket, on our On kitchen. our very existence. Very existence, you know, agriculture. Um, the food uh, supply chain is definitely going to be disrupted. And that's a huge emergency. Uh, we need to also look at the impact on the people the impact on the commerce. We need to look at the psychological impact on the people. They are traumatized. Now they've moved from being residents to IDPs. And they're also going to be traumatized when they get back to their residence to find the huge damage that has been done. If you look at the socioeconomic impact, it's great, it's unbelievable. Uh, people have lost a lot commerce, mm -hmm. business, clientele, mm -hmm. life, health, and economic issues. It's great. It's, it's complex. That's why I, I believe that this should be a national issue. In fact, uh, Governor Samuel Otom is already mm. raising the alarm that mm. uh, there might be food shortages uh, pretty soon uh, in the state. And of course, uh, this is going to uh, affect the country uh, at large. Uh, farmlands have washed away. But then when you look at it, uh, natural disasters uh, cannot be controlled, kind of, but can they be managed? In this case now, flooding, how can, for example, a state like Benway uh, prevent it from happening? Because it got uh, warnings from NISA and even Nimit that mm. it was going to experience such? Yes, it um, has to do with mitigation and adaptation. Um, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change clearly stated, um, instructed for mitigation and adaptation. And based on that, uh, we have the NDCs with the five pillars and the six pillar, which is the vulnerable groups. Um, the the 1,000, 100,000 people involved belong to the vulnerable groups. Talking about checking it, um, we are aware that there are 11 drainage channels, major channels in Benue State. Nine of them have been impaired. About uh, 193 human, buildings human have been built across those channels. Mm. So we are moving from um, controlling the, the effect to exacerbating the effects. Mm. That's number one. Uh, but if you look at it too, if you merge this, the population increase 
affects the way people build, the way people are scrambling for uh, urban migration. Those are issues that compound the challenges. And then moreover, you find that the intensity of the rains, if, if you look at the records, we used to have this between 10 and 20 years. But due to global warming, it's been decreased to four to five years. Yes. Between 2015 and 2017, Benin State has had five major incidences. Mm. And who knows what's going to happen next year. So we need to put adaptation and mitigation uh, structures in place. For that adaptation mm. structures in place, in, in, specifically, what kind of adaptation? A adaptation, really are we about? Um, uh, the climate smart uh, agriculture is an adaptation climate smart and resilient cities you need to build your cities now with um, flooding and such um, natural disasters in mind because it's happening it's global warming would you but recommend something in the mode of what the netherlands have done building uh, their environment around their natural um, habitat instead of actually uh, changing the environment to suit their own purpose. That is what they've done. They, they, they live in the water, they, you know, and mm. places like Venice, for example. Is that what we should be looking at? No, we, we cannot go back to that stage because okay. that was started at inception. Mm. Now what we need to do is to adapt mm. because uh, of the climate change issues. We need to put structures in place that will be able to manage the situations because it's going to come again i will tell you but it, was, it seems that it is when disasters like this happen that mm. uh, nigerian governments not all of them now so we don't generalize they seem to be conscious of what is, is to be done and uh, most usually it's just that this short period after that once yes. things get to normal it's, 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 it's treated as an emergency mm. uh, there, there is no long-term plan for it that is why we encourage the subnationals the states to have climate change department, or at least a climate change desk in the states, where they can connect with the federal, where they can connect with the Department of Climate Change and get advice on what to do. Mm -hmm. Most of the states don't even have the climate change department. Well, shouldn't the Ministry for the Environment already take care of such things? That uh, well, the Federal Ministry of Environment is mm -hmm. doing absolutely well. Uh, recently, they've sent in notices to the states to establish climate change desk, and I'm sure only a few of them responded so when you fail to do what you need to do and then there are issues, you come running back. But we need to go ahead of the curve and be able to put structures in place, policies in place that we will need to. For example, in Benue State, they are aware that 193 houses have been built across nine of the 11 channels. Did we have to wait for this to happen before we do what we need to do? We don't need to wait for things to happen. I also understand that there is a need for about 321 billion naira to be able to construct the kind of channels, the kind of drainage channels that will be able to take care of. That's a huge amount of money. Mm. The state is looking for money to pay salaries. Where is this going to come from? Ugh. That's why I even believe we need to uh, escalate this beyond the national level. It's a global issue. It's a global climate change issue. We need to go beyond and we need to tap into the funds made available in the Paris Agreement to address this issue. There's $100 billion uh, up to 2020 that's available. We need to go in there and, and assess the funds to be able to deal with it. Uh, a state cannot deal with this on its own. The state will go bankrupt. The state is already looking for money. Well, then the state is not even part of the, uh, I think about 16 states now. Uh, the Received money former on the acting funds, president said yes. that it should be given $1.5 billion for ecological, uh, from the Ecological Trust Fund to address problems uh, like floods in their states. Benue State is not even part of, of the states. Yes, uh, because I believe Benue State has not been able to articulate their, their climate change challenges. Mm -hmm. that's, again, that brings us back to having the climate change desk you know, when you have the climate change decks and when you speak out, 193 houses have been built across mm. nine of the 11 channels. Did we have to wait for this to happen before we do what we need to do? We don't need to wait for things to happen. I also understand that there is a need for about 321 billion naira to be able to construct the kind of channels, the kind of drainage channels that will be able to take care of. That's a huge amount of money. Mm. The state is looking for money to pay salaries. Where is this going to come from? Ugh. That's why I even believe we need to uh, escalate this beyond the national level. It's a global issue. 
is a global climate change issue. We need to go beyond and we need to tap into the funds made available in the Paris Agreement to address this issue. There's $100 billion mm -hmm. uh, up to 2020 that's available. We need to go in there and, and assess the funds to be able to deal with it. Uh, a state cannot deal with this on its own. The state will go bankrupt. The state is already looking for money. Well, then the state is not even part of the, uh, I think about 16 states now. Uh, the Receive money former on the acting president funds, said yes. that it should be given $1.5 billion for ecological, uh, from the Ecological Trust Fund to address problems uh, like floods in their states. Benue State is not even part of, of the states. Yes, uh, because I believe Benue State has not been able to articulate their, their climate change challenges. Mm -hmm. that's, again, that brings us back to having the climate change desk you know, when you have the climate change debt and when you speak out, you are to articulate and you have data of your climate change challenges, mm. then you will be considered to have need for it. You don't need to wait for an emergency mm. before you make known the challenges that uh, your state is facing. Yeah, but uh, in spite of that, um, Beno State did come out with uh, a report that uh, some two billion uh, naira set aside for ecological fund was diversified and, you know, into... Uh, e private pockets yes and I, that is part of the problem that they're having now um yes i heard about that but uh, i cannot comment uh, on it uh, on, on that for now mm -hmm. yes all right the commissioner uh, for the environment uh, said that uh, the dredging of river benue is going to go a long way mm -hmm. in uh, mitigating uh, the problem there do you think uh, that it will solve the problem alone if uh, arbitrary building of structures and uh, houses uh, are not checked um, the reality of the fact is that um, climate change is here, global warming is here. Uh, when you drain the, the Benue River, it's going to help. But we need to change our way of thinking, we need to change our practices, our policies, we need to change our actions in such a way that we need to be very conscious of our environment, we need to be very conscious of this kind of hazards. So it goes a long way, it's a whole length through the whole value chain. Mm -hmm. It's just not one issue. By the time you drain the, uh, you, you, you clear the drainage system, by the time you, you, um, you, you do what you need to do with the, with the uh, uh, Benue River, and you don't change your practices, in the next few years, it's going to be filled mm -hmm. up again. I'm interested in, what are some of these practices that we need to uh, begin to imbibe, uh, to mitigate or to check you know, this flooding, because, I mean, Nimeth has already said, look, a similar incident to what happened in 2012 yeah. uh, could happen again. Yes. W what are the things that we can do both as individuals and, of course, as government? L let's start with individuals. Yes. Mm. We need to be very, very conscious, which means we need to be educated. We need mm. to be aware. We need to be sensitized about how we treat the environment, how we, we build, how we dispose of our garbage. That is number one. That's the first thing. It looks little, but it adds up. Number two, as a government, we need to be very strict on our policies, on our building policies, on the channels. We need to have a regular plan on how we're going to sustain the channels. We need to maintain the channels, you know, as, as a state. Number three, we need to go global. We need to engage fully in the global climate change action. We need to know what it means. We need to know the process, processes. We need to receive support and engage that and infuse that into a sustainable development. Exactly. Mm. It's interesting you say we need to know what climate change means. Yes. Um, I, I wonder where that education should start. Should it start from the primary, you know, nursery primary it level? Start from the home. Because people hear <laughs> climate change and they don't really understand don't what, what climate change is. What exactly is it? Uh, climate change is, is, shows a drastic change in what the weather conditions used to be. Mm -hmm. And um, it is caused primarily, among other things, by uh, emission. When the emission in form of uh, gases go into the env uh, environment, carbon the, the emissions, carbon emissions they form a blanket. Mm -hmm. And when they form that blanket, the blanket traps the heat and the air becomes warmer than necessary. And when it becomes warmer than necessary, it's like taking a shower, for example. And when you leave the bathroom, you look at the ceiling, you will see um, drops of water and things like that because the environment was heated up. And when these accumulate, they drop as rain, heavy rain. You know, what we see in Benue State is not just the regular rain, it's the intensity of the mm -hmm. rain. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, if you want to water a flower bed, mm -hmm. 
By the time you pour the showers over a space of time, over one week in the you find that um, the crops are growing well. You find that the soil is able to absorb the water. But about the time you take a bucket of water and, and you pour water. it in, dump it mm. in, you're going to experience some problems. That's exactly what's happening. And it seems that uh, it's not just Benue now. Uh, we've pretty much generalized really that it's the same problem with almost all Nigerian states, really, the attitude of the people um, not really caring about the environment as much as they should. I recall what happened in Port Harcourt a few months back mm -hmm. that for days or even weeks that there was a suit there and there were, the people, even the government, didn't know where it was coming, coming from, from until very much later. So how important is it really for the government, not just the people now, the government, the people have concerted efforts really to have a hands-on on what is going on in the environment for them to understand that the air they breathe is very important that the, the floor, uh, the, the soil is protected, that the trees should be protected, that it is when they protect these things that they are ultimately protected as well. It's, it's very important for the people and the government. And what the UNFCC did was to incentivize action for climate change issues. You need to put in something there that will make the people interested. Mm. So um, the Paris Agreement came with incentives for developing nations to look into the environmental issues more deeply. By the time you put in money, you put in sustainable development, you put in investment in climate change, mm -hmm. it, it will attract action. By the time you, you bring climate change to the forefront of the discourse for the Nigerian youths on social media, we need to talk about it, we need to know about it. it you, those are things, by the time you bring in climate change in Nollywood, mm -hmm. by the time you bring in the climate change in several areas, what it just, becomes known. Yeah, what you just said now uh, brings to mind again what happens in Rwanda and even Tanzania, and uh, that I'm very sure of. Uh, they, in Rwanda, they plant trees every month, every last mm -hmm. Saturday of the month, and then the community with the, with the best uh, trees or plants planted gets um, uh, rewarded. Even in Tanzania, there's a competition kind of in tree planting among communities. Uh, the government encourages um, the people to do that. And then Maybe that's they what the rewarded. Nigerian government should be doing, the, the, the incentivization mm -hmm. that sure, you just yeah. you know, talked, talked about. about. Um, you know, t take Lagos, for example. It's a highly populated state. Mm -hmm. yes. If people were encouraged to plant a tree one tree per house, and you'll be given whatever, yeah. you know, if you planted a tree. Is that what government really should be Yes, and at? then we need to I infuse it and make it a part of our living. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, um, when we go back to the village, my grandmother would say, this was your tangerine tree, this, your tangerine. this was planted mm -hmm. when you were born. Mm -hmm. If you, if you are discharged from the hospital and you're given a seedling, when you get home, plant it and name this tree over this child, mm. you know, on the name of this child, you will find that when it, it's infused into our culture, we'll be planting trees. You need to incentivize it in one way or the other. By the time you approve building plants and you say mm -hmm. part of the uh, approval criteria is that you should have three trees planted in your, your compound. compound, you find you are populating it. Mm -hmm. By the time you say you, for you to put up this fence, there have to be six trees along the line mm -hmm. of the fence. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time you decide, say, Instead of giving you 5,000 Naira every month for those who don't have jobs, bring 100 plastic bottles and you'll get 10,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. You'll ah. see that all the plastic bottles will disappear. That, is, a, that disappear. is another issue, really. Uh, the the mm. states, uh, for example, Lagos and uh, other states in the country, uh, get uh, littered with plastics and nothing, uh, practically nothing is done about it. You see a, a recycle bin not yeah. filled up, but then plastics, uh, plastic bottles and plates are on the floor oh. where it is stationed. And so, again, it seems that there is need for political will on the part of the government to make things done because, uh, like we've seen so far, it seems the master plan uh, of many states in the country distorted. have been compromised. Yes, I, that, I, I looked at that. When I, I was looking at the situ situation with Benue State, mm -hmm. I, I realized that to properly do the analysis from the records, it's going to cost about 1.8 billion naira. Wow. And to be able to deal with this issue, it's cost over 300 billion naira. Where is the state going to come up with that kind of money? Mm -hmm. You can't find that kind of money locally. Uh, that is why I'm advocating that we need to leverage on this issue with Benue State right now and go global. Mm -hmm. The world needs to hear about it. We, are, we know so much about what's happening in Houston, Houston, in India, but we know little about what's happening in Benue State. Yeah, but like they say, you know, solutions to any problem actually come from within and not necessarily without. from without. Mm -hmm. Maybe government needs to begin to look inwards. Imagine if each 
uh, Benway person or negotiator, you know, contributed one naira to an ecological purse. Absolutely. Imagine how much I, I love that. Mm. Yes. You know, and by the time you add that to the discourse, like I said, on mm. social media, and you have a platform and you say, um, contribute one naira, ten naira mm -hmm. to the Benway flood appeal. Yes. You, you'll find that the money that is needed to take care of that will come in. Will come. Mm, but then will they expend the <sighs> money judiciously? That is another, That's another matter. matter. Really in the country. Benway Thank you very much. Assure you <laughs> yeah, Dr. Paul Abolo, Enviro Strategist, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. You're welcome, and thanks thank for having so me. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we have other issues, of course, to discuss this morning on TVC Breakfast. You want to stay around? Mm.